Hi, it's Andre. I'm here with another tutorial, this time a bit advanced, for you to understand more about the interactions we can create with RuneScape Maker. This is the kind of room you'll be able to build at the end of this tutorial. I'm picking up where we left off in the introduction video, with a key that can be added to the inventory and can be used to open the final door. As explained then, your room can have four wall views for you to add graphics. You add them as layers, one on top of each other. You have to keep in mind that each graphic will then have a position index that you can find in its settings. You will quickly need to rearrange them anyway. For example, if you add a cushion, then a chair, you will see that the chair will be in front of the cushion. That's usually not what you want. You can rearrange the graphics using the first four black buttons in their basic settings. The three buttons on the right of this line are also useful for when you're adding your first graphics and deciding what your room will look like. You can flip, duplicate and delete a graphic if you decide you don't want it anymore, for example. The button I haven't mentioned yet, the one with the eye icon, is probably the most important one. It defines if the graphic will be visible or not when the game starts. This will help your interactions. As I said in the previous video, escape games online are all about showing and hiding items. So using this button basically allows you to keep a graphic invisible and without interactions in the beginning of the game. For example, an open version of a safe should probably start hidden. The player usually interacts with the closed version first. Some graphics have different positions and color versions. The specific buttons for this will appear just above its basic settings. For instance, a chair can be seen from the back, from the side, and be black, brown, red, etc. Let's continue creating our game. I personally like to add some basic and decoration items first to help me plan where my puzzles and clues will be placed. In order to keep it simple for this tutorial, I will just put a chair here, a window, maybe with some wood blanks to give the impression the player is really locked in. I will also add a side table next to the chair with a vase. Now let's place a shelf unit with some books to fill in. And its future door anywhere next to it. I'm not placing it over the units because I still need to select the items inside to create interactions. Placing it over now would block my clicks. As you can see, I wouldn't be able to select the books here. Um, and I will also add a close toolbox near the shelving unit. My plan is to make the player get the final key from inside the safe. I will place one on the chair. This one is closed, so I also need an open version. It will appear when the player enters a secret code. I will place the code on a sticky note inside the toolbox and add a padlock. I also need two versions of the toolbox and the padlock then. To open the toolbox, the player will need a small key that will be inside the vase. I will keep the key above the vase though for when the player finds it. When the key is inside the vase, we can see it anyway, so there's no need to actually simulate the placement of the key there. And finally, to get this small key, the player will need a magnet. I will place one behind a book. Let's save everything. Don't forget to do it often, by the way. 
if you preview your game now, you will see that all the items are there. It's a real mess. And there are no interactions beside the ones we already created for the door and the final key. Go back to the editor and toggle the visibility of all the graphics that shouldn't be there when the game starts. The room is much cleaner now. I personally love this step, as you can see your game exactly as it will appear to players. As part of your room design, know that you can change its background, wall and floor colors in the game parameters. You should probably do this in an earlier stage, if you know exactly the kind of room you want. The next step is creating all the interactions. Let's go for it. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial. Don't forget to like, share and leave your feedback in the comments. Roomscape Maker is a small business and I would love for it to grow more. Let's start with textual interactions. Let's say the planks are blocking you from using the window. So again, to add small messages, you just have to select this. Let's say the face is fragile, that these books don't seem relevant, and that the padlock is closed. As I said before, to open the safe, the player will need a code. So to create the interaction, you need to say that on click, the safe should request secret code. I will put 1710 here, but you can use any letter or number to create your own code. And now the important part. What should happen if the player enters the secret code as requested? The open version of the safe can be shown, as well as the key inside. And this, the closed version of the safe, should be hidden. Let's save our progress and test this part of our game. The safe requests a code indeed. If I enter anything else but the code, it will say nothing happens. But if I enter the correct code, yes, it is suddenly open. And I can even get the final key already. But at this point the player won't know the code we created. So let's keep working on the game. By the way, you're probably noticing that we are working backwards and going from the way the player is going to escape to the way the game will start. So the secret code will be found on a sticky note hidden inside the toolbox. When clicking on the sticky note, it should show secret code 1710. There. Now, if the sticky note is inside the toolbox, we first need to open it. Select the closed padlock and unclick while selecting the small key. It should remove the small key from the inventory. Then show the open padlock, the open toolbox, and the sticky note. And it should hide this and the closed toolbox. Next, let's work on the small key. I said that it would be inside the vase, but I want the player to get it with a magnet. So select the vase and on click while selecting the magnet, the small key should appear. And if the player clicks on the small key, it should be added to the inventory, but also become invisible here. The same thing should be done with the magnet the player can add it to the inventory. Now, as the final step, that will actually be the first one for the player, let's make them open the shelving unit. Duplicate the door and have one of them closed, the other one open. Hide the open version, as usual, and on click on the closed version, you should be able to see what's behind the door. 
Now just place everything in its final position. And the game is done! Save the game and test it multiple times to make sure you didn't make any mistakes. When you're done testing it and are satisfied, you can send your game to a review. Once revealed, you will be able to publish it and share it with everyone you want to. Even if this is a simple game, I must say that I'm actually proud of it. I hope you liked the game too and was able to understand every step of the creation process. Please let me know if you have any questions or want to share fun ideas, suggestions. I would also be glad to know if this inspired you to create your games. And that's it. See you next time in another video. Bye!